So good morning to you. Uh, first, I would like to thank the, orga the organizer of the workshop to invite me. Um, I'm going to talk about the Johannesburg International Relations Strategy as an example of a city from the global south uh, attempting to gain influence and power at the international scale. So my presentation is based on a preliminary research. Uh, I conducted interview in Johannesburg with city officials involved in city-to-city -city cooperation and in the drafting of the strategy, which was released in 2012. So I'm looking more particularly I'm looking um, more particularly at the ways in which the Metropolitan Authority of Johannesburg is using this strategy to consolidate its leadership position within the African continent and also to occupy a strategic positioning within the BRICS alliance. This is done through various activities, as you can see on the screen, city-to-city -city cooperation. We have two emblematic examples of successful partnerships conducted by the city of Johannesburg with, it, with African city. The one is Willy Longwe in Malawi. And if you are interested in this case study, Jenny Robinson has started working on these specific cases and a very, very interesting example. And the other one, as also shown on the screen, is a link with Addis Abeba in Ethiopia. So this is one aspect of the strategy. The other one, and this is a very good um, connection with the first presentation, uh, Johannesburg is very active in transnational networks, in alliances of city and local government, and they're also eager to participate to global, network, uh, to global networks. We can see here on the screen the image of the former mayor of Johannesburg making a public address at international events, such as the C40 Mayor Summit, which was hosted in Johannesburg in 2014, and we also see the, the former mayor addressing the audience at the Metropolitan's annual meeting, Caring Cities, uh, which was also held in Johannesburg in 2013. My argument in this paper is that in order, in order to uh, understand and conceptualize such a strategy, we need to engage and combine uh, that diverse range of theoretical works and disciplinary perspective and what I'm, what I'm trying to do with this research is to combine a body of literature that seldom talk together. So um, my presentation address and connect key theoretical questions in three different fields that seldom, as I said, talk together. The first field is about the international circulation of urban policy models from the global south. Uh, this is mostly dealt with, with the field of urban geography and urban studies. They also built on a strong critique of the policy transfer field, uh, such as developed within political science. The second body of literature, it's a, it's a rather uh, a recent one. Uh, they're trying to question what they call the city political agency at the international and global scales. And it's based, as we will see uh, later on, in the observation that cities are more and more active in international affairs, in global governance, also in diplomacy, and this is a field which is mostly addressed by political science and international relation. But I will see, it's very interesting, they also use a lot of um, input from uh, urban geography. So this is a kind of interdisciplinary perspective on city political agency, which is quite interesting. The third field, uh, which I think is interesting to draw on, is a changing geopolitics and also all the work around new form of South-South development cooperation especially talking, talking from the Johannesburg perspective. And this body of literature is mostly dealt with in the field of development studies, but also anthropology, uh, anthropology of development and geography. So what, I'm, what I think is we, there are very valuable insights to be gained by examining the arguments made in the recent literature on the growing empowerment of city, especially as this, this attempt to combine this interdisciplinary perspective. And also, I think this is a good opportunity to look to connect the research on city to the debates about what they call the rising powers in the global south. And I think we have also a quite interesting insight from the field of um, development geography in order to understand the reconfiguration of power relation through states, but also through the active involvement of cities. So at uh, the first part, uh, 
I want to ask some key pre preliminary questions about what is meant by city political agency, who is acting and what for. So generally, when we talk about city political agency, we talk about the growing role and the impact of city in international affairs, global governance and diplomacy, that is, mostly their role in fields that are usually associated to nation states. So we're really questioning now how much they are involved and what are the influence in this specific sphere of, uh, of competencies. So there are questions about their new functions, their new capabilities, and their influences. So it's not only being influent, it's also being having the capacity to impact the state of affairs. And I think this is a very, a, a very interesting theoretical challenge as well as an empirical one. So what have um, been observed so far, and I think that's also why we are raising questions, it's more an empirical observation. We have noted throughout time that cities are more and more have an active presence in the international scene. And I'm not going to go into too much details here because uh, the former presentation was uh, uh, covering the wide range of activity. They are not new, definitely, and it was very, uh, very well addressed in the first presentation. It's more, it's, they have gained prominence over the past decades. So besides city to city cooperation, as we have seen, cities are participating through transnational network and alliances of city. They collaborate also with international organizations such as UNICEF, UNESCO, UN Habitat. They really attempt to have a greater influence in decision making within international relations. And I think that's a key uh, area of interest here. Not only liaising between them, and assessing their importance, but also trying to have an impact on decision making at a broader uh, level. So why are cities becoming so prominent in international politics? Definitely there is a continuation, I mean there is a strong influence of the literature of economic development city, as see that major command center in the global economy, they also see a major site of, of innovation, and also this is also strongly linked with the See is that global urbanization, that there are more and more urbanization process throughout the planet and that cities are really the key nodes of power and influence today. And also the second point, why are cities becoming so prominent? It's also the way we frame global issues today. And there is a lot of literacy saying we turn global challenge into urban issues. And in the way we also legitimate the position of city to address those challenges because they are seen to have this urban dimension, which is very important to, to help solving problems. So uh, when I looked at the literature addressing this issue of street city political agency, I have to say that the field that I'm coming from, geography, urban studies, they are really not very looked at it. I think this is also linked to the way they have addressed uh, the relationship between cities. They look at flows and exchanges. They conceptualize city as nodes, point of interaction, but not so much as an actor acting on the international scene. So I think the way of framing the issue was not really uh, conducive to uh, question the role of city as a, as a political actor. Uh, when we look at the literature in political science and international relations, there are two sets of literature that address the question, but only partially. We have the literature that uh, more deal with the decentralization of international relations. So the city is always confronted to the state. This is local government versus state, not so much the city versus international actors. And the second set of literature which address the city political agency, I think that's the most promis promising one, and I think that's also connectable to the conclusion about that's, uh, that's the way we have to question the role of network form of governance. What does that mean in terms of analysis to see those networks form gaining prominence uh, in international affairs? So I've synthesized here what I think are crucial in order to understand what can empower city today, what are the drivers, uh, forces of city. It's, and I'm going to illustrate that with the example of the city of Johannesburg. <laughs> A network is a way to give a position of power to city through engagement, through empowerment, through access to resources. It's also within network create specific power relationship and we will see how Johannesburg also is managing to consolidate his position within African city, within the Brick Islands. So the internal dynamics of networks are also very important to understand how they, they try to create some form of uh, powerful position. The third element has more to do with uh, discourses 
values, social norms that are built within those networks. And we can already see how they try to shape understandings, understanding of issues, also how they, they, they propose some solution over some order. There is a form of a hegemonic uh, a dynamic also within the networks. Um, Network has also uh, a place where they pull global influence, as I've said, shape norms and value, and also what, has, what was also very well illustrated in the first presentation. This is also where people, uh, Meyer uh, personality, can also have a, what they call the catalytic effect and have very much powers uh, over uh, their position. And the last one, I think, is also a very interesting uh, research avenue, mm -hmm. is how city build that identity of city their representation, and when looking at Johannesburg, you'll see how important it is that they have this specific African Southern identity to defend as opposed to Western or Northern conception of uh, politics and uh, urban uh, developments. So I think that's also why, that this is why we need to have a very strong focus on network form of urban governance. And also what I think is also important, and it was also mentioned in the first presentation, we really have to Keep, to keep an interest and a focus on uh, geopolitics. And also we can here connect to, to the debates about the rising powers from the BRICS, from emerging economies. How do we rethink the international order today with those rising uh, cities in the field of uh, development cooperation and international relations? And we will see that the geopolitical dimension is very strong in the case of South Africa. So what I'm trying to do here through this research is to also contribute to decentralize our standpoint. So looking now from the perspective from the city, from the global south, see what are the policy innovation, what are the new flows of knowledge that circulate between south and south and city. And I think this is quite interesting way of looking the new positionalities of south and city on the international scene. And also, and we will see that at the end of the case study, how these new positionalities of South and City produce new categories, uh, a new hierarchy, hierarchy of cities. So as I was uh, mentioning uh, in my introduction, I've looked at the Johannesburg um, International Relation Strategy. This strategy was released in 2012 by the Metropolitan Authority. It was drafted by the Central Strategic Unit, which is under the authority of the mayor. Um, this is a continuation of an older policy which was called municipal international relation policies that was implemented since the late 1990s. Uh, we, we all remember it was a time of democratic transition. South Africa, there was the end of the international boycott against South Africa. So South Africa and South African cities were very keen to go back to the international scene and they were very involved in city to city cooperation and trying to get a hold on these international networks. What is interesting here, and also referring to this uh, way of having this geopolitical uh, consideration in mind, is the strategy has divided the world in three parts. They have the North, the African city, country, and the BRICS. And there are two major objectives. Uh, the one is an international objective, this strategy, of international relations really have to support city development strategy of the Metropolitan Authority, which in, it means to uh, maximize the interest of the city. They want to have an input into their own urban policy through exchanges with uh, other city. The second one is more an external objective, and it's explicitly said that the Johannesburg International Relacy, Relation Strategy has to support the, the national geopolitical agenda. So there is a strong alignment between, on the one hand, the metropolitan, the metropolitan Authority, and on the second hand, the national government of South Africa, and they have mutually supportive objectives, and they really l try to um, make their way in the international scene using state influence, but also city influence. This is um, really, uh, uh, shown through the way they categorize the city and also through the way they establish priority. This is a very systematic strategy. Uh, the partner cities are selected uh, based on their strategic value for Johannesburg and for South Africa. So uh, their selection is based on a detailed analysis of international trends, so they have a, a whole report on urbanization pattern 
economic development growth, and the challenge also that are posed to cities in a globalized world. So partner cities, as you can see, are selected according to geographical criteria, location, but also to economic criteria, weight, size, democratic potential for growth, and also geopolitical interest. The priority is no more to north-south cooperation, but really now to south-south relation. So if we see the example of uh, the selection of uh, cities within the African agenda, cities are selected in order to ensure a strategic position of Johannesburg within the regional and continental economy. So the cities that are selected, Luanda, Maputo, Lagos, are, they are either what they call corridors or economic clusters that structure regional development process, or uh, they were very interesting in city in Nigeria because they've seen that as a very rising city in the African continent because of a strong democratic potential and economic development prospects. When it comes now to the BRICS agenda, how they select uh, the city that they want to enter into partnership with, BRICS city have a different image for Johannesburg. They are seen as a global city of the future, hubs of competitiveness, and they really want to have alliances with cities that are the most dynamic, the most innovative, such as Sao Paulo and New Delhi. And they really see um, to seek mutual benefits from a collaboration. So for instance, with China, they want to uh, have exchange about information and communication technology. For Brazil, they look at their housing policies, especially the way they do with informal settlements. And India, they also have strong interest in the textile industry. So now we, when it comes to the th third area of um, uh, politics, North-South, it's no longer a priority, as I said, but they want to have what they call smart partnership. They want to have tangible benefits, not only ceremonial uh, visits, but also having something very profitable for them. So they want to be more with city involved in health, low carbon urban environment, green economy, smart city. So they very look at what the northern city can bring to them in terms of innovative practices. And they've selected a city uh, like Bilbao and New York. So at the end of this selection process, they have a whole agenda of selecting city for strategic partnership. As you can see uh, on the screen, uh, the African agenda and the BRICS is the most prominent one. But as uh, mentioned earlier in the discussion, what they call the networking activities play an important role in this strategy. And during the interview, they also say that this is the most important one is to be active through international networks. So they part Johannesburg participate what they call flagship events, conference forum, C40, Metropolis. They're very keen to have a platform for uh, presenting their city development strategy, for sharing experiences, and also for co-opting uh, cities in order to enter into a partnership with them. So what I, what I found quite interesting in the way they select the event they want to take part to is they say we want to, to be part of events that shape opinion. So it's not like mega events. It's really a platform and forum where they could um, share their value and influence the way uh, urban issues are problematized and the way they can promote solutions. So this is really a platform for uh, presenting, publicizing, and disseminating what they call the Johannesburg good or best practices. And uh, networks such as city alliances, UCLJ, create opportunity for exchanges and exposure uh, for Johannesburg. But also, they, they also want to use those networks. They say we can be an alternative to the Washington consensus and neoliberal policies. We can have alliances with other BRIC cities and try to promote pro-poor policies, social justice, more equity into a city development strategy, public participation. There's very strong political lobbying around this uh, different way of framing urban issues. And this is where we can make a very interesting connection with the world being mailed in, being made in the field of development studies, where they really look at the way thousand countries now are claiming different positions, different values, maybe different economic models. And this is how the city can also um, uh, enter into this um, expertise. So as a conclusion, um, um, we really need, as I said in the introduction, to engage with a, with a wider range of disciplinary perspectives that we used to do up to now. 
there is very some interesting example, some interesting um, questioning around this hypothesis of the growing empowerment of city. Um, as a research agenda, I think this is quite interesting to test through empirical research this claim for alternative norms. We have to test that in order, is it only discourses or is it also some kind of alternative way of doing politics, of thinking about cities that is promoted. Also, as I was referring in the introduction about the need to have a view on the international power relation within city, uh, we cannot assume that BRICS agenda is the same for all BRICS cities, so we also have to think about the international power relation within BRICS city. Is it our collective voice? What are the dissensus among those voices? And also, uh, it's very also for researcher, we are discussing about the, the role and impact of city, but how can we assess the impact of city in, in, at the international scale, and what new methodology do we need in order to be able to uh, sustain this, this uh, hypothesis. Thank you very much for your attention.